uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. We, we just ask that you would, as we go through through this, that you would open our minds and open our hearts to the truth of the gospel that we all need to know, to understand, and to live. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Romans is the very first epistle. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. Starting at verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. I want to talk today about what is the gospel. The worst I think the worst thing that anybody can do is make the assumption that something is a, not, not important, but it is. For example, when you have that assignment or that test that you say, it's not going to hurt if I don't really, really I, I, I'm going to study for this, only to find out that that test or that assignment carried more weight than you thought. It can turn your grade from an A to a C, a B to a D, or it can turn your grade from a C to an F. Only to find out just one thing. If you would have just given it the importance that you should have, that this was something very important that you thought it was not. The most important thing that you can ever learn through coming to this school is to know and to understand and to live the gospel. In our text, tells us what the gospel is. The gospel is effective. The gospel is inclusive. And the gospel is intentional. The first thing is that the gospel is effective. The gospel accomplishes its desired result. Every last one of us has a problem. It's called a sin problem. And our problem with sin is threefold. The power of sin the penalty of sin, and, and the presence of sin. At the cross, Christ dealt with both the power and the penalty of sin. And when, when he comes back, we will be, be forever dealt with the presence of sin in our lives. But, but you might be wondering, how did the gospel, how would the gospel effective in dealing with our sin issue. First, the gospel is effective because it is powerful. When you put your trust in Christ, it allows you to overcome your number one problem, and your number one problem is sin. It allows you to overcome that power. How, how, uh, the pro problem as you trust in him is that you can overcome the, the things that you stru struggle with. And, and, and because of that, that's, that, that's it. And, but, but not only is the gospel powerful, is that it allows you to overcome your sin, but it's also a, a not a actual that is, right now, everyone who has a, to put their trust in Christ has the power to overcome the things that they struggle with. Every one of 
Every one, one of us, who has put their trust and faith in Christ, can overcome the things that they are in, the tempted with. Say, for instance, if I have a laptop and I don't have it plugged into to the wall, but the minute I plug my laptop into the wall, it will charge my laptop, or won't it? Or if I have a phone and you're your phone, once you charge it into the wall, once you plug it in, it will start charging, right? My power is available immediately. Immediately. So if my laptop or phone is at a 1%, and if I don't plug it into the wall to, to be charged, it will die, right? If I'm on a phone, that phone call will drop. If I am working on some, something on my laptop and it is at 1%, I will lose everything, right? Some of you some of you are struggling with major issues. And the reason why you're struggling with them is that you have not plugged it into the wall of Christ. You're, you're struggling, and all you have to do is to make that decision to trust him. So the question is. But, but once you plug it in, once you plug it in, and once you are plugged into Christ, is that you will have the power to overcome your sin. So the question is, what are you struggling with? Is it lust? Is it things? Or are you like, struggling with a, 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 a cheating? The gospel can give you the power to overcome that. Are you struggling with losing your temper? The gospel can give you the power to overcome all to overcome that as well. Any any type of like, the temptation that you are in the struggling with, the gospel gives you the power to overcome it. Not only is the gospel, not only is the gospel effective, but it is also inclusive. Every single person in this world has been affected by sin. Every single person. And if everybody is affected by sin, if everybody is affected by sin, and if God truly de desires everybody to be saved, and if God de desires everyone to be saved, then that means that the gospel is for you as well. It doesn't... It doesn't uh, no matter where you were born, the gospel is for you. It doesn't matter that the color of your skin, the, the, the gospel is for you. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, tall or short, male or female, the gospel is for you. God is bringing a people. He is a, a creating a people of every tribe, nation, and tongue who love and serve Jesus Christ with, with all their heart. See, because that they re realize that, that his death was for them. But what, what does this really mean? If the gospel is for everyone, and it is, it's it is also for you regardless of who you are. But how does that affect day-to-day -day life? That means that nothing, absolutely nothing, 
should cause you to be a, 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 a divided with a brother and sister in Christ. If Christ is the central, if Christ is the main thing, then Christ is, is whom we serve and we don't allow anything to cause any type of division. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there is that there be no divisions among you, <clears throat> but that you be a, a united in the same mind and in the same judgment. Every one of us has uniqueness that God has even created. And it's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> Every single per person is almost like a, I'm a fingerprint. You are completely unique and there's nobody like you. Our uniqueness should never be a reason why the church should be divided. I'm pretty honest with, with you guys, right? I'm pretty honest about my, my own uh, struggles with, with the church. I love the church. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but we really had some things that we need to really work, 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 work on. The, the church is not in any way, shape, or form I am not perfect. But we're striving for that I am not perfection. One of the things I hate here in the West, it seems as if uh, it seems as if a the politics. We allow it to divide the church. We, we allow things to divide the church that we should never allow it to divide the, the church. It's a problem that we, we all are confronted with on a day-to-day -day basis. My hope, my hope is that this next I am the generation would not allow would not allow the things of the world to uh, divide the church. That we would we really hold our uh, our am not our am not politician they am not accountable and hold them to the standard of a am not scripture. Not only is the gospel effective, and not only is the gospel inclusive, but the gospel is intentional. The gospel is intentional because it gives us a righteousness. Our number one problem is sin. That's our number one. Every last one of us. The one thing we all have in common we, we have a sin issue. Even as a, um, a believer in Jesus Christ, you still have the presence of sin. There is still a, um, a bad paddle from day to day. And what that means is that before you come to pay faith in Christ, you are a sinner. There, you are in the unrighteous. But you know what God does? He gives you what you don't have. He gives you a, a righteousness. He gives you, when you put your faith in Christ, he gives you Christ a, a righteousness. He gives you what, what you don't have. That's why in Romans 6.23, if you learn today or, or this, this week, that's why salvation is free. It's absolutely free. You don't have to do anything to work with Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's free. You don't work for it. It's just handed to you. And you get it when you put your faith in Christ. And this is the way that God has always worked. 
faith has always been the uh, agent, if you will, of how people are made right with God. In Genesis uh, 15, 6, it says, and he believed the Lord, and he counted him to be righteous. We're talking about Abraham. He believed God. But not only is faith, faith is not just a one-time thing. We trust God every single second of hour of every of every hour of every day. Faith is a lifelong process. It's lifelong, and we live by faith. Faith isn't just something so that you can say. It's it's what you use to get through each and every day. I mean, when when you are having the worst days, I mean, when when you wake up and tears are just flowing down for whatever reason, and you just ask the Lord, help me get through today. Just help me get through today. And Jesus is there. Jesus is there. But this is what God has always done. From Genesis to Revelation, God's people have always lived by faith. Uh, Abraham lived by faith. When God told him to go to a new country, he lived by faith and he went. Moses lived by faith. When God told him to confront Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. He lived by faith. Uh, Caleb lived by faith when he gave the good report and he was not intimidated by the people. Rahab lived by faith when she hid the spies and then she and she trusted their word. A Joshua lived by faith. He trusted God that he would have conquer his enemies. He lived by faith. A Hannah lived by faith when she trusted God when, when she wanted a child and she would go to the temple day after day after day. She lived by faith. David lived by faith. David when, when God promised him that he would be king, even though that the present king was trying to kill him time after time and again, he lived by faith. Uh, Esther lived by faith. She believed that God had raised her up for such a time as this, even though that when she confronted the king that she could die. She lived by faith. Daniel lived by faith when he wouldn't when he wouldn't give up on his fast, even though he knew that he would be thrown into the lion's den, he lived by faith. Matthew lived by faith when he saw Jesus and he left his former way, way of life to follow him. The woman with blood, who is just, she, she lived by faith. After years of I, I'm not doctors after do doctors not being able to heal her, she just said, if I just trust the hem of his garment, if I just grab a hold, I'll be healed. She lived by faith. Paul lived by faith when he would go to town, to town, to town, to town. Preaching the gospel and suffering a amount. Persecution after per persecution after per persecution. He lived by faith. John lived by faith when he was exiled to the island at Mount Amnon, Patmos. He lived by faith. What do you need to live by faith with? What do you need to trust God with? You can be able to live by faith. And God will be with you as well.
through every single step. Through every single step, God will be with you. Live by faith.